Lasgans. Story continued from Torox's. Commissar Rickard looked at the evil now pouring from the cathedral at the highest center. The tides of red twisted spiked flesh and gnashing teeth that issued forth. An assault on the senses. An assault on his sensibilities. Rickard had led his men over the walls of the hive in Torox's into the very heart of the demon infestation. He looked again, and his men stood behind him. They had the heavily armed armored personnel carriers, a large contingent of the hulking but simple Ogryn, and the remains of the third-born mechanized infantry. Picard had a long history with the troops of Born. They knew him well. He had turned them around, found mutineers and a formation known for cowardice, and reforged them, broken them, and rebuilt them. And they knew his mind. At the head of his forces, he turned around and said the words they all knew were coming. Time for the ladder! And so, they formed up. They knew what to do. They were about to perform what the lads called Rickart's Ladder. The do or die formation. The hive called Pandora had been the initial point of a hell gate being opened, a doorway between the real world and the dimension known by most who knew of it as the Warp. There demons of all variety of diverse evil abode, and when the tear was ripped through the veil, they flooded through. The planet had been all but overrun, but one formation of Astra Militarum had held, had pushed forward and was even now poised to assault the well-torn reality that was the open gate. The greater demon had been defeated by the intervention of the Legion of the Damned, and one single corridor, one Achilles' heel, had been thrown open. As the leader of the invasion died, the demon banished back to whence it came. The demonic hordes became directionless. The one thrust toward the center of their new domain was unnoticed, and thus was not countered. The walls of the hive were no obstacle to the toraxes, which just magnetized their treads and went up them and then over. As the force collected in the main square before the march towards the center of the hive where the cathedral was, they took up their new positions. Huge hulking ogrim were placed at the sides to keep the tides of evil that would assail them from every alleyway, every thoroughfare that connected with this processional pathway. But they were good for this. Even the Ogryn could walk along in a line to either flank and just mulch anything that came at them. In the middle of the formation, the APCs would reside. From there, they would half be facing forward, firing their battle cannons and other weaponry above the heads of the infantry. The other half would be reversing up from behind them, facing backwards and doing exactly the same. The infantry, the third mechanized, were arranged into ranks as wide as could be managed and five deep. This was at the front, but the back also. But they would walk backwards, doing what the front were doing, but in reverse. With the ranks now prepared, the ladder began. Rickart walked to the front of the force, five paces ahead of his dense blocks of men and machinery, even in front of the side Ogryn. From there, he raised his sword, and steadily walked forward. All followed suit. When the hordes of Chaos Beasts began to close, he would stop. He edged a line in the ground with the flat of his blade, indicating that the enemy would not pass that line, but also to show that they would fire from this position for a short period. It was a rung on the ladder. Rickard then raised and lowered his sword, indicating when each rank of those behind him should fire, as his blade dipped up and down, those laying down, then those crouching, then those standing, 
or fired one after another. A near constant barrage of ranked fire barked out from the lance guns in volleys that laid all in front of them waste. For if the shots of the first rank failed to stop anything, the next two would do it, or the combined efforts of all. Rickard judged when they had culled enough, had made enough space to take another step on the ladder. He would then take about five to ten paces forward, in which time those behind should advance slowly and calmly at his pace. He would then get to the next rung of the ladder and repeat the process, digging a line in the ground again. The heavy firepower of the Toroxes and the massed volleys of the Lasguns smashed all in front of them. Then they would advance again. The ladder was slow going and incredibly risky. Densely packed like a nut. If anything cracked the nut, no room to move to retreat to withdraw or to countercharge. The forces of chaos would wipe them out to a man. But nothing killed the enemies of the Emperor more quickly or more effectively than the ladder. The born troops also had suffered many casualties, so those who remained had an abundance of clips for their lasguns. It was another prerequisite of the ladder, for if they ran dry, it would mean the fixed bayonets would come into play, but that would signal their destruction. These were chaos forces, demons from the lowest, most twisted and hateful blood-drenched levels of hell. The forms of the demons changed as the ladder progressed. It went from twisted cultists assailing the sides, easily brushed away by the Ogrin flanking forces, but now dog-like quadrupedal red hellhounds were rushing at them in ever-increasing numbers, only to be replaced by the taller humanoid forms wielding twisted and serrated blades. All the while Rickard stood out in front, those directly behind him firing to his sides. If they should fail, if they should not shoot accurately and some get through, the Commissar was a dead man. And despite how much he was feared, he was also respected. They fired true. At one point in the ladder, Rickard felt that the men were not firing fast enough, so he actually got to his place and turned his back on their enemy, while bobbing his blade up and down swiftly, all the time glaring at his men, just glaring at them, while all of the legions of hell were pouring at them from just over his shoulder. But after the waves were called faster, he did not do this again. And thus the ladder moved ever onwards, the rear being assailed every bit as ferociously as the front, there was no second during all of this slow procession that there was not the deafening scream and thunder of war from all around them. It seemed to be working, and working well, for they had come most of the way. It had taken the better part of three hours of slowly walking, standing and firing, then walking again, then firing. But they were making it. But then the hard thing happened. All knew of it. All feared it. Whenever the ladder was used, as stated, there were weaknesses, and they began to plume amidst the densely packed ranks to cruel effect. For the Chaos forces now brought up two new forms of madness. The cathedral doors flashed a deep, dark, wet red, as the ground itself then shook. Huge, monstrous beasts, seemingly made of metal like bulls of steel and brass, stampeded forward. Many were smashed by the battle cans of the Toroxes. Many more were hit by volley after volley of lasgun fire. Like a million small fireworks being thrown at them. Individually, these shots did seemingly nothing. But combined? Combined, they were the death of a thousand cuts. They were like being drowned in tiny explosions. Like a child using a lens to burn insects in the midday sun. The collection of them made the metallic beasts heat and burn and then explode. Alas, as stated, that is when huge balls of infernal flame began to plume amidst the tight form ranks and columns and men burnt to a crisp. Unable to evade or even duck effectively due to how densely they were packed, no give at the sides or to the rear, the explosions hurt badly. Ricard swiftly reacted and himself turned, slashing his sword again, so that his men knew to withdraw. As the men turned and regrouped, the Toroxes advanced slowly and fanned out, making an impenetrable wall at the front. They moved forward slowly, 
smashing into warp horrors. The infernal fires did melt some of the armor, but not the majority. The infantry now behind the transports, but firing at anything that got too close or on top of them. A new wave of metal bulls, these blood crushers of corn, barreled out of the cathedral, passing the lines of strange cackling things launching balls of fire into the guards. It seemed to be a standoff the guard were losing. For the bulls were a threat to the armor, but could not be taken down without the ranked fire, but the ranks would be culled in moments if they came out from behind the toraxes due to the skull cannons. Nor could they dally. For every second the gate was open, more filth ran into the streets and gutters before them. If they stopped, they died. Commissar Ricard and his men were assailed on all sides. Would they make it out alive? And now, gentle listener, it is time to forge the narrative. Our brave Astro Militarum guardsmen are in a desperate pickle. Will they move forward and close the gate? Will Commissar Rickard come up with a wave to victory? Or will they be surrounded, worn down, and crushed beneath the foot of the demons of the blood god Corn? You decide! At the end of this video, please go to the comments section and put in two letters for your vote. Then please comment on a separate entry, as this makes it easier when it comes to the counting. Please put in RC, that's Romeo Charlie, for Rickard Charge. Rickard would lead his men in a desperate last throw of the dice and countercharge the enemy, in hopes of punching through to the cathedral and closing the gate to the warp. Please put in RR, that's Romeo Romeo, for Rickard Reinforced. Colonel Harker has not been slouching about, and in the midst of his full assault all down the lines, he has cut off a set of troops and sent them to back up old Rickard. But if you vote for this eventuality, please put in a separate comment or below the letters, stating which unit we have not covered in the Imperial Guard that comes to help. Please put in KT, that's Kilo Tango, for Corn Triumphant. Alas, this is the grim darkness of the far future. Perhaps Colonel Harker can come in for a revenge killing spree later, but from the way things have gone, you wish the forces of Corn to weather the fire, reach the nut and crack it wide open, and trample Rickard, his Ogrins, and the third born mechanized into the pavements. The choice is yours. You decide. RC, Romeo Charlie, for Rickard Charge. RR, Romeo Romeo, for Rickard Reinforced. And KT, for Corn Triumphant. Please comment. Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and important war gear of the Warhammer 40k universe, the grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace, there is only time for war. And today, as a celebration of a reaching a community of over 90,000 souls, and also a thank you to Borden, one of the moderators on the Discord, we are to cover the ubiquitous Lazgun, the weapon of the armies of humans, the Astra Militarum, or Imperial Guard, who are the true defenders of the Imperium. And so, as usual, for the very basics, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote, Lazguns. The Demolisher, the Vanquisher, even the mighty Deathstrike missile launcher, pale in comparison to the sheer firepower of trillions of Lazguns unleashing hell in unison. Captain Garia Septus of the 263rd Maccabean Janissaries. The Lazgun, also sometimes referred to as a Laz rifle, is a direct energy anti-personnel weapon used by the military forces of the Imperium of Man and it is the most common and widely used type of laser weapon in the galaxy. It is standard issue for the Adeptus Mechanicus Cybernetic Scutari Infantry, all Astra Militarum rank and file infantry, and most junior Astra Militarum officers. Las guns are reliable, easy to maintain and to produce, and are readily available on most Imperial worlds. 
Allah's gun has a longer range than Allah's pistol, but is nowhere near as powerful as Allah's cannon, nor does it possess the rapid firing qualities of the multi laser or the hell gun. Though not as powerful as kinetic projectile weapons such as the ubiquitous Bolter, the lower cost of production, the lack of requirement for ammunition production and resupply make the Raz gun the best choice for the larger forces of the Imperial Guard. The Raz gun uses a small portable capacitor power pack to produce a focused pinpoint laser beam, which is strong enough to take an ordinary human arm off with one shot. But it is not as effective against the more durable alien bodies and stronger types of personnel armor. A Laz gun's beam also cauterizes the wounds it inflicts due to the immense heat given off by the shot. The Laz gun is effective when used en masse, but considerably less effective when used alone. The Laz gun uses the same basic technology and operates along the same lines as other laser weapons, emitting a beam of high energetic, focused, coherent photons. The high amount of energy carried by the photons of the beam cause the immediate surface area of a target to be vaporized in a small explosion. It is a relatively unimpressive weapon when compared to many of the other high-tech weapons available in the galaxy, but it is capable of cleanly severing limbs and potentially even piercing the power armor of a space marine, but usually only through a vulnerable spot in the armor, and please take that with a pinch of salt. Most Lasgun designs have iron sights mounted along the top of the weapon. It is powered by a small rechargeable power pack located beneath the weapon and in front of the trigger guard, which can be recharged in a number of ways, including by sunlight. These power packs can also be overcharged, a trick used by Imperial Guard veterans which causes the pack to explode, turning the weapon into a makeshift grenade. This tactic is only used in last-ditch situations, and it results in destruction of the weapon. Lasguns have numerous power settings for adjusting the power of each shot and to conserve power, resulting in a weaker laser shot fired. The weapon can be overcharged with a hot shot laser capacitor pack, providing more powerful but fewer shots. The Lasgun mounts a bayonet lug, allowing the weapon to be fitted with bayonets or combat knives. The sniper variant of the Lasgun, known as the Long Laz, is the preferred weapon of the Imperial Guard's sharpshooters. The barrel of the Long Laz is extended to bolster the weapon's accuracy. The barrel requires replacement after every 20 to 50 shots, depending on the power setting and cooldown time. For this reason, the Long Laz is outfitted with a slide lock barrel, which is easily locked and unlocked from the weapon's housing. The standard Lasgun pattern used by the Imperial Guard is known as the M35 M Galaxy pattern, first put into use in 2546-789 Millennium 35, although thousands of variant models, marks and patterns exist. The Cadian shock troops, for example, commonly bear the M36 Cantrail pattern LAS rifle, originally manufactured on Cantrail as the name suggests which is a weapon known for its sheer robustness. The Katachan Jungle fighters prefer the Mark IV Laz Carbine, which has less cowling than the M36 and is therefore lighter and easier to carry in the dense jungle environs preferred by the Katachan regiments. Other common marks include the easily manufactured Mars and Armageddon pattern Laz guns. The much sought after variable power setting triplex pattern and the short-barreled folding stock models used by Imperial Guard mechanized infantry, tank crews and troops assigned to starship or space station details. Even more exotic are the intricately crafted heirloom weapons used by the troops of regiments of the Vostroyan Firstborn and the Akatran pattern Mark IV, which is much valued by Elysian drop troops and other drop troops for its compact size and accuracy at short range. Despite these variations, the main mechanism of every lasgun remains the same in almost all regiments. This makes the logistics of supplying multi-regiment armies a much simpler matter for the Departmento Munitorum. Other variants of this weapon include the more compact Las Pistol, the anti-armor Las Cannon, 
and the more powerful and expensive hell gun. And Las Cannons we will definitely cover it another day, sidebar over. The Imperial Standard Las Gun, as used by most of the regiments of the Imperial Guard, has many attachments including, but not limited to, several types of scope, bayonet, laser sight and flashlight. The Las Gun and Las Pistol are weapons generally meant for dealing with lighter armoured infantry, and thus lack the brute power of more advanced weapons from the Imperial's arsenal, like bolters or plasma guns. This has led the weapon to be scorned by some of the Imperial Guard soldiers and officers as flashlights. However, a Las Gun's relative power should be assessed only when comparing it with more powerful Imperial weapons, as even a Las Pistol beam is capable of killing an unarmed target, causing immediate death. When set to maximum power, Las Guns have been known to penetrate weak spots in Chaos Space Marine power armor, with the shot penetrating the neck joint or even decapitating the foul creature in an instant. But the Las Gun excels at massed volley fire. A hail of Las shots from dozens, if not hundreds, of Las Gun barrels can stop the charge of hordes of lightly armored opponents, like Chaos Cultists or Orc Boys, dead in their tracks. Concentrated Las fire upon a very powerful single armored target can eventually overwhelm the target's armor. Despite its lack of damage output, the Las Gun remains a favored weapon of Imperial soldiers, for it has many redeeming qualities. It is a solid and rugged weapon that remains reliable and precise in almost any environment, and requires very little maintenance. A quick clean up while mumbling a prayer to the weapon's machine spirit after usage is all that is needed to keep it going for over 10,000 shots, after which the focusing crystals must be replaced, an action that requires the intervention of a knowledgeable tech priest. Unlike a flamer or a melter gun, the Las Gun can be outfitted with a bayonet or used as a club at close quarters without risk of damaging the weapon, and it will never overheat with potential fatal results for its operator, like a dreaded plasma gun. Another redeeming quality of the Las Gun is that its power pack can be recharged by exposure to sunlight or being put into a campfire for a few minutes, ensuring that the weapon almost never runs out of ammunition, even on prolonged operations or in situations where supply is unlikely. End quote. Ah, the Las Gun. There are so many forms and different versions and varieties. I almost feel that we should do another entry in the future. But of course, when I do do this, I hope to have more technical specs for us to discuss. Can be a bit tricky getting those details, so give me time. But I shall sum up intensely briefly, as otherwise I honestly could go on for hours. What is the truth about the Las Gun? Its quintessence, its heart. And here it is. If the Bolter won the Imperium in the time of the Great Crusade, then surely, from that moment on, from the second the Horus Heresy was over and the Legions a shadow of their former might, certainly unable to protect the entirety of the Imperium, from that second onwards, mankind had to defend itself. And surely, the one weapon more than any other that has defended and retained the Imperium. It must be the lowly Lasgun. I have been Baltimore, your faithful servant. I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to Lasguns. If so, then please do consider liking and subscribing. If you do, then hit the notifications button, as I will not want you to miss out. If you see the worth in what we are doing here, then do also consider joining our Patreon, or give the video a share if that is beyond your present scope. It would be a great boon. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.